Hello everybody, um, I wanted to talk about a very, very important topic today, uh, essentially the jungle, wildlife, and a very odd question, being human Satanism. Um, the wind just picked up and now it stopped again and I'm going to pause uh, to think about some things and hopefully pray. So I'm very concerned about the situation. Um, I wanted to uh, basically talk about this uh, very important topic of national parks, wildlife, um, the jungle, Congo specifically, and East Africa, um, and look at some of the foundations of problems on our planet Earth. So uh, we have this idea um, that we know what we're doing on planet earth and we need to rethink about how to listen to earth carefully um, and this is a discussion on how to do that and i'm sorry if i'm pausing this video from time to time and trying to uh think carefully about this it's a open discussion um well it's it's a very serious discussion um in terms of wildlife here so I wanted to st start here um, with a topological map of Earth uh, and explain something uh, important. So basically, uh, so I'm really sorry here, I'm having to stop the video just because I really, uh, you know, the wind is blowing in from the side here um, and I'm just trying to uh, be very cautious about our discussion on what we're talking about. But essentially, you know, I'm getting some uh, requests from people about it's very important food and life itself and just living a good life um, but uh, one of the problems is right near the jungle uh, and how we work with the jungle specifically um, and basically uh, the population on our planet uh, keeps growing and we need to think carefully about how to work here so I'm really sorry about this discussion. I'm going to try to keep it as organized and perfectly clear and logical as possible. Um, and essentially what we're looking here is the uh, one of the uh, most important uh, spaces on Earth in terms of wildlife. It's the edge of the jungle here. Um, and uh, this eye um, someday may it, it already is very important in terms of how we perceive what's going on with life and all life on our planet. Uh, so let's take a moment and just first of all take a step back here uh, from what we're trying to look at. This is, uh, you know, one perspective of the Earth. I'm going to turn off the climate so you can see uh, the difference here, but then I'm going to turn it back on so we can. Uh, focus on the climate for a moment so basically uh what we're talking about here uh is uh the jungle and wildlife right there is this little this eye is actually a major eye here right next to the jungle um and as we talked about we talked about a, a latitudinal and longitudinal eye here up in the uh, black sea and caspian sea um, and it turns out that these two spots here, um, which I haven't yet discussed, are uh, perhaps the uh, nose or the smell of part of how the jungle may work. And there's also another lake up here called Lake Bacall, and it's actually as big, you can't really see it, but it looks here very similar uh, to the African Great Lakes down here. And these three together essentially form uh, the nose of our planet's uh our, our planet right so uh the important concept that i'm trying to make here is that um you know I, I was looking at some rain maps there's also a hidden eye of rain right in the center of the jungle here that's about the same shape as lake victoria as well so uh but i wanted to stress the importance here uh, i have some friends that really need some help um in certain locations and essentially we're starting to get to the point where wildlife lands and farmlands are converging in a fundamental way that's actually um, causing some significant conflict so uh, let me pause 
So I, I just wanted to pray for everybody right now because essentially, you know, we have these wars going on and some very serious problems, uh, including food and water, um, particularly in the Middle East. Um, and some of that may actually result in uh, conflict for the wildlife here. Uh, and I just wanted to talk about that carefully so that you understand what's going on. So the uh, it turns out that Ukraine is actually a very vital farmland area right in here. You can see it's flat. And this whole area actually produces a um, significant percentage of the world's uh, food in terms of wheat. So this conflict here in Russia actually may be a conflict over food uh, and how to distribute that food globally. And you can see that it's fairly close to the Middle East and it's probably true that a lot of this food should go into the Middle East because of its proximity. However, uh, Russia recently had a meeting in St. Petersburg right up here uh, where all the African nations or many of the African nations visited uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Russia and discussed uh, the current situation. So that's a very weird situation because essentially Africans have gone to visit um, Russia, which is at war, um, and and um, you know the uh, there's there's certainly a debate of whether uh, it, it's not a debate. There's a very serious problem here. So um, the uh, the main question though is that how does that relate to food, right? So we're kind of saying oh it's a war, um, but actually it's maybe related to food more than we realize, and actually that may actually ultimately be related to the jungle and wildlife so going back to the concept of satanism um you know one of the interesting things is that uh you know we should really think carefully about what we're doing on earth um to all the wildlife so it's interesting because if we don't listen to the earth and to the universe and ultimately to god we're probably going to get into some trouble so and a lot of that may start with the wildlife here so I'm really sorry, but I'm gonna quickly go through these topics. So again, we have this eye here. This is actually, I circled this wrong. This would be part of the nose here. Um, so as we listen to Earth, um, there's a very important question of how we do that to prevent uh, further problems uh, on Earth. Um, so uh, I wanted to look at this area carefully and mention that there is essentially three of these black wildlife jungle back doors so these pathways are very important in terms of the wildlife uh, getting to and from fresh water resources following these rivers and so there's basically between these two lakes is one passageway there's another passageway through here and then there's another passageway down around Burundi so this is Burundi Rwanda and, and Uganda if you're familiar with that region so Overall, uh, I wanted, and, and I'm just really sorry, there's so many important, th this is an extremely important topic. So, uh, you know, whether you're thinking of possibly visiting the jungle or possibly visiting Africa, you should definitely know about this stuff. So, you know, you could directly fly into the jungle, but that is extremely dangerous. And what I would recommend is definitely taking your time and reconsidering how you approach Africa. So what I wanted to suggest here is that there is some routes, traditional routes, and Europe is up here. It's not really shown in this picture, but there's basically a north route, a south route, east route, and west route, and I'm gonna explain these in detail. So before you just jump into uh, working with Africa, you should probably consider a lot of the cultural things um, and some other aspects. and. Um, you know, this is a very interesting problem because there was never a white person that ever visited Africa until the early 19, deep into the jungle, into the early 1900s. And even that route uh, is, I mean, at least publicly published. Um, so that route was essentially through the Nile River, right? They traveled up the Nile River and into the jungle that way. And then there was also a route through here, basically sailing around Africa. Uh, and then there was another route possibly through South Africa here and then along the coast here. So uh, 
but what I'm basically explaining here is there's the what I would call the front door and the back door of the jungle, right? And uh, but there's basically north, south, east, west. So rather than jumping right in, the, basically the one of the questions that we're having is on food and natural resources, right? So there is only a small sliver of left of land in some areas that the wildlife has. At. If you can see how tight that pocket is, this front door is a very small front door. The back door is actually a lot larger in terms of the uh, climate and the biodiversity, but uh, this front door is vital to keep uh, very carefully uh, uh, and what I would suggest is thinking about far western Africa. So before you head directly into the jungle, when you can die from diseases, uh, malaria, even one little insect biting you could be a very serious problem. So let me zoom in a little bit more on this. So what I'm suggesting here is that actually Dakar, Senegal starts right here at the edge of where the desert meets starts here. So there's actually quite a lot of similarity between the climate along here. This is Nigeria and some other areas. And and what I recommend for Africans also is that, you know, we should really reconsider populating the jungle and maybe look more carefully at just living in West Africa um, and not um, living directly in the jungle. So basically, uh, the food situation, we should try to farm actually away from the jungle and not in the jungle. Um, and leave that up. so basically we have three main areas we have west africa the jungle itself and then east africa and all this is part of sub-saharan africa so uh which is basically south of the desert you can kind of see that line here so let me just go back to some details if people are interested in specific details so um basically what happened is that someone was saying hey man i really need even ten dollars just for food and it's not they don't need the money necessarily they need the food right and actually you're starting to compete with resources um here so if you look carefully this is kampala here and this is what we're looking at um let's get a map here so you can see so we're basically looking at this region right here and you can see this is the back door of the jungle and again what i'm suggesting here is all this used to be very forested there's almost all the trees have been cut down now um and used for housing over the past few hundred years so this used to be much greener even up into here all of this used to be very green and now it's all been cut um, down to a smaller portion and even that is only a sliver uh in some areas so in and uh let me restress this is that these conflicts that we're seeing may actually really result to conflicts in the jungle and africans and the rest of the world needs to take responsibility to make sure that uh we keep uh human satanic activities under control um, or at least um, be wise about what we're doing here so this is a highly populated region now of west africa let me pause for a moment so i'm really sorry about this here is the population map of africa right and there's actually a you know it, it's not just a small number of people here in africa there's <coughs> i was surprised to hear that there's over 1 billion people now in africa alone so you can see that this area is kind of um blued in and that is the population here and you can see uh up in ethiopia quite a lot of people and even in the back door here of the jungle so actually what we're seeing here is a definite um population here in west africa um and like i was suggesting is that you know you should maybe reconsider what's going on here right so this is the last back this is the last this is the the actual front door is in 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 this area here um and there's a city um here but uh and cameroon is actually vital for that whole thing so i'm sorry i'm kind of struggling here even talking about this and i need to maybe be cautious so um essentially right here that's there's a mountain uh at a university called it university of bua um, and Douala here and there's actually a declination field line that is correct on the if you're interested in the electromagnetic spectrum uh, that actually goes right through this line right here in Douala so basically there's a river here uh, this river 
actually heads out into the desert and comes into here and becomes the uh, Niger Delta, I believe, and it's uh, right here on the border is Lagos, Nigeria. And let's see if we can zoom in and you can start to see some of these areas. So here's Dewala, Lagos, Accra. So basically, um, you know, what I'm suggesting is take a proper front door to the jungle, really learn about um, what you're doing if you're gonna head into the jungle or even wanna approach Africa, and that's probably through Dakar going this way, um, and let Africans essentially uh, help decide what's really going on in the jungle. So you can see there's actually some major cities, and I don't wanna get into all the details here, but um, essentially the population, there is quite a lot of people right at that edge of the door of the jungle, um, and that uh and you can see even a major city in a, and if you really look in here you can see there's actually quite a lot of people living right in the jungle through this pathway kind of on the south side uh, of the jungle right now today and these are millions and millions of people and that means if you're familiar with the food situation one person requires up to 10 football fields worth of land per year so that's quite a lot of um, when you talk about a million times 10 uh, 10, million, 10 million football fields, that's a lot of land for farming. So let me go back to the real question here, um, and we're going to look at this carefully in a second. Um, so essentially, uh, you know, what we're trying to suggest here is that, um, you know, these regions are not just, we can't just say that this is going to be 100% farmed out by humans. We need to think about the variety of animals because animals require a variety of habitats and if you know anything about um, the uh, jungle region here in Africa this region actually has so at one time in history um, there was probably a lot of monkeys a lot of elephants giraffes all that in West Africa as well as East Africa a lot of that got kicked out there's essentially no wildlife like there used to be uh, in West Africa because it's all been farmed and now there's people that live there. A lot of that actually moved across perhaps the northern plain here of the jungle uh, because it's a little bit drier because you can't just go directly through the jungle even if you're a wild animal. So that maybe moved here to East Africa. A lot of that became safaris. So there's ma mainly a lot of the bigger safaris that people try to go on are in East Africa, believe it or not. And that's basically because it was less quality land than West Africa. This happened in China and Asia too. Uh, essentially what you see is that the Chinese and the Indians took all the land and even in Southeast Asia, all this has been populated now. And if you look at it, the map, it's actually much more serious problem than you realize. You think it's bad in Africa, but man, look at India, right? This is all population here. And you can see along the coast here, it's all populated, right? And actually the reason there's no population here is because it's a desert, just like in Africa, you're not gonna have any wildlife or any people. So essentially all this land has been taken by people, 100% in India, right? And even in China, 100% in here, and even along the coast, this is actually a very, if you remember, there's a billion people here in Africa. Man, can you imagine how many people are over here in China and India? And it doesn't really make it. China actually has a very higher population density than India. So it doesn't fully explain the population in China, this map, um, because actually the farmland becomes just spread out unbelievably. So again, going back to the problem is that that's what happened, right? So they essentially took over. There's This whole area has been taken over. The wildlife has no place to go. So this, this kind of war that we're seeing, uh, and even a question of sat Satanism, um, our eye, this eye right here is watching. We're watching, we're, li we're smelling, we're listening to all of Earth. And um, Lake Bacall up here, is kind of a last frontier um, here in Russia connected to this. So we basically have a very interesting scenario where we're listening to both. We smell essentially what's going on near the jungle, right? And then we also are getting up into the Arctic here. This is very cold lake um, up into the Arctic. So there's an interesting way that the earth works. So hold on a second. 
So I'm really sorry. I, I'm just so stressed about the situation. Um, you know, my friends need some help immediately, and I'm not sure what to do about it because, you know, they need farmland. It's not, they need actual food. And a lot of that maybe needs to come from uh, Russia and uh, in terms of emergency food and as well as, sadly, South America. And that gets into the Amazon jungle, which we're not going to talk about really. But uh, this topic, and I'm really sorry if you're listening to this, um, I wanted to talk about this very carefully and very organized. Um, and uh, I'll do that in a moment um, here. So it's just hard because there's so many details. So let me let me explain to you what this map means here in detail so you can see exactly what we're talking about, right? And before, if you live in Africa and you're listening to this and you need food, we need to think about this carefully because we're essentially, if we get food, you know, these wild animals, they don't have a farm. They depend on the natural habitat to give them and provide them food. So if you, you know, it, it, the whole ecosystem has to work for a wild animal to live. Humans, we can farm, but animals cannot. And these wars and problems that we are experiencing are perhaps, this is a very cool image here, but uh, these, anyway, so what I want to stress here is this eye this is Kampala, right? So my friend uh, texted me from Kampala. There's a major city right there. Okay, so, but what I wanted to stress is that uh, this is the back door here, and we're looking at these lakes right on the border of the jungle right there. So uh, as we as we look at this, this is this lake, one, two, and three here, and there's these passageways through here that we need to watch out very carefully uh, in terms of the wildlife, right? So basically the wildlife needs, a, imagine if you lived in a cage, that's not gonna be cool. Or even a small little forest preserve or area. These areas are actually heavily populated. Again, let me go back to the map here so you can see. This is a heavily populated area. And actually what's been going on is the animals have been kicked out to the south side of the lake, which is actually worse habitat and they're even trying, if you look at the farming maps, which we're gonna look at in a moment, a lot of the farming is actually on the south side of the lake now, and they're trying to take this land as well. So what we really need to do is we need to re redo this land and actually start farming in maybe this area and give this land back to the wildlife. So that's the really complicated discussion that we're trying to have here. So again, let's look at the details really quick here so again this is the south part of the lake here and this particular person lives right here which is a major city in Kampala there's a vast population here and how to return this land right here so what we're kind of proposing is that the Kenya side this side should be more of open to humans and this side should be more open to wildlife and it's actually the exact opposite right now and that's one of the conflicts so if you're talking about conflict in africa they actually had what's called the congo war um and you may want to read about that i read a little bit about that but what you essentially start to realize is that the current war and conflict in africa is actually in rwanda which is right here so we're actually digging in really deep into what the potential problem is and how to solve that um, peacefully. So uh, again, uh, let's look at these diagrams really quickly and I'll try to explain this, what's going on again. So those are the three uh, lakes and these lakes are very important lakes uh, for biodiversity. Many people, one of the pieces of history is the first and the oldest human skull was actually found here. So a lot of people believe that this was the start um, maybe where God sent a lightning bolt and started life on earth or something along those lines. So there is some deep history, uh, even in terms of what evolutionary people believe happened. So uh, this whole region is very, very important, right? So this, what, what I'm trying to circle here is, is some new concept. So in between these lakes, we definitely need to think about wildlife preserves. So there's a spot right here and a spot right here. And let me zoom in to show you that area. So 
and we'll zoom in here and I'm trying to show as this as correctly as possible so you can see there's this pocket here there's one two and three pockets all from the jungle that is precisely what we are looking at here in terms of how to get that to be wildlife areas so what I diagrammed here is that's the one two and three spots right here and how the animals potentially travel through those regions so this region we can probably reserve for food and farming and agriculture and the same with the Kenya side and Tanzania side so these sides right here it is more reasonable to do that and one of the questions uh, that we were looking at is even how to make part of this a national park, right? So maybe even, yes, we can farm on this side, but we need to actually reserve this whole chunk here as a national park and a public um, area. So this is very vital wildlife open. It's essentially like an open zoo. Now in India, they allow the animals to roam anywhere, essentially. Uh, they try to do that, um, the cows, for instance. Um, that is a comes with a risk um, in terms of things now you'll see a road here called a 109 and that right there should probably be the divider line uh, after this side you should not you should really think about wildlife on this side of that road um, is one way to look at it and down on this side we basically need to think about wildlife almost forever here uh, around that side of the jungle so uh, and let's look at this again. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about the spiritual side and the astrophysics side um, and talk with you about that for a moment. And this is a new concept. Um, again, we're looking at this strange thing like Victoria that looks like an eye. Um, and I will discuss some details there in a moment. Hold on a second. Um, but if you think about this, you basically have this eye here and you basically have like an ear this is called there's a very funny name for this space here it's called the horn of africa and if you really look at it you basically have this nose area the eye and an ear and what i wanted to emphasize is that we're basically talking about how to listen to earth uh correctly right and prevent wars and just terrible things so as you look at this we're gonna zoom out here and you can see there's basically an, an ear ring. And I wanted to talk about this as a really interesting concept. So earrings are like this, right? So we basically have three earrings. We have this tiny little earring here, we have this big earring here, and then we have this Sri Lanka earring. And there's actually quite a lot of, there's something called the Andaman Islands and a whole bunch of earrings along the coast there and i wanted to look at that extremely carefully to point this out to you so this yes we're talking remember we're talking about this tiny little island being an earring all of madagascar being an earring and sri lanka definitely being part of that earring um and there's some tiny islands now these islands and Amin islands is actually run owned by india um but there's notice there's all these islands here these are actually very natural habitats and we can use these as earrings to listen to the wildlife so this island if you know anything about indonesia let me show you how terrible this problem is it's not a joke this entire island is populated by humans notice that island's populated it's gonna are we just gonna populate the entire island we definitely need to listen to these islands very carefully about wildlife including the Andaman islands that's why I'm calling it the earrings of what's going on here. So again, let's go back to uh, this picture here. So again, we talking about how to listen to um, Earth to prevent some very serious problems. Um, so basically, we got that right there, right? So and the other thing is that I was realizing this is that uh, the brain, so whoa sorry about that um so my brother's a neuroscientist and actually we need to not only think about you know how the how the how the earth like like you know so we, we basically have this really interesting question right so we have antarctica here and if you look at this man that kind of looks like a cerebellum and a spinal cord heading down here so um and uh, it's kind of really hilarious. I was one of the first people to really publicly discuss this topic about how to listen to the earth in, 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 a, 
in, in this kind of sense, like, man, it seems like an obvious thing. This looks like a brain, but man, interesting thing is that if this is the eye. We basically have a way to listen, to start studying the brain of what's going on here. And it's clear that yes, this is definitely probably a frontal cortex of some sort um, for the eye, but we really cannot go in, like if you're gonna do a surgery on the brain of, of the wildlife brain, you don't wanna go directly in there. It's kind of dangerous. You could actually cause significant problems um, to the brain. So there's actually the, the outer side of that <clears throat> becomes very important. and. Let me just add some earthquakes here so you can start to see what's going on even in Africa. So it turns out there's not a lot of earth volcanic activity. And I wanted to re-stress to you that that's not the whole story because when we're talking about millions or even billions of years, yes, there's a lot of earthquakes <clears throat> up here. So it turns out that today's modern reasoning about how to look at this actually doesn't even come from Africa. I'm like here I am I'm probably European and actually a lot of that is coming from this region here you can see that there's a lot of stuff there but this whole region actually is there's a plate that comes out here and you can see it's actually listening to something really more complicated so this actually this region here um, <clears throat> becomes part of Africa's vital brain <clears throat> in terms of the uh, uh, the uh, geological activity at fault lines. So what I put is a little picture of the brain here. And so uh, you're basically looking off, this is the eye, and the brain is actually quite extraordinary uh, for what we're looking at here because essentially we have the earrings. Remember we were talking about the listening to what is going on. So the brain is clearly not gonna be something very simple on this side. We have three ears, earrings, right? And the Horn of Africa right here, and then these these kind of uh, uh, earthquakes in the in the in the outside. So definitely, we can listen to the jungle and listen to Earth, not necessarily by going right there. And and I wanted to stress to you that before you look at all this stuff about life on Earth, there is the North Pole, right? We, we haven't even discussed the complexity of the North Pole here, and and it really doesn't even. This is the Atlantic fault line coming down here. And a lot of my work originally was looking at Antarctica, right? If you're really, if you're like, you don't even like, you know, let's not disturb the jungle. Let's focus on understanding uh, what appears to be the actual brain of earth, which is Antarctica and being very cautious about what we're doing there as well, right? We don't want to be building things or doing things to upset the spirituality of our planet. Um, and connection to uh, God and the universe. So we have to be careful about that uh, extremely. And this all points right here. And it kind of really raises a question because this is all pointing down to Antarctica. And you can see there's definitely a major earthquake spot right there as well. So, uh, and, and when you think about the fields of our planet, the electromagnetic spectrum and everything, um, uh, and and you know the aurora we have these glowing lights on the north pole and the south pole and there's uh, 30 minute uh, diagrams that you can see live images or, or uh, uh, things of what's going on in the north pole and the south pole so definitely but this is the the uh, jungle that we're basically talking about in food we can't really grow food there and what I was proposing <clears throat> you know someone uh, there's like a lot of people are aging now on planet Earth. You know, like uh, in Europe, the average age is 40 to 40 or older. Um, in Africa, it really is young. But um, you know, what we were kind of proposing is to make this lake into rather than living in the jungle, let's get the people out of the jungle, move them into around Lake Victoria. It's much nicer even to live on a lake. So just get out of the jungle, move to the lake here, <clears throat> and make this into like an international city. <clears throat> where anyone could travel to or anyone around the world. The debate is that if we make this into a ginormous city, basically we depopulate a lot of the regions and make this into an eye that we can really listen to life carefully about, right? So we're really talking about a futuristic plan of Africa, right? And and Lagos is trying to do that plan right now. They're building the, what's called the eco city and they're actually building out in the ocean it's a ginormous, you should look at the ECO project if you're interested, but, and that's a billion, many, many billion dollar project, but we owe 
you know, uh, we owe Africa, we owe the wildlife on our planet. We live, be, we survived on our planet this long because the wildlife, because we didn't always have to do things. You know, the, the wildlife has a key here that we need to listen to. So again, right now we've almost entirely populated the west side. That's exactly the wrong direction, right? We actually should have populated this side, which is the Kenya side and the Tanzania side. We need to actually swap this whole concept immediately so that we stop having conflict with the wild animals and we can start getting food. So again, I want to stress, I know there's probably people that are very, I, did, I decided not to eat during this conversation. I haven't eaten breakfast. I haven't eaten lunch. I've barely taken a sip of water. And I'm talking to you about this because it's extremely important discussion. Um, and uh, I wanted to take it seriously myself. And I'm definitely thinking about food as I do this discussion. And, um, you know, all I'm saying is that if we're having very significant conflicts in Ukraine, and that perhaps is fundamentally about food, let's rethink about this because actually Africa, and it's no joke, Africans went up to Russia to discuss this and you know uh they need they needed help and we need africa's help to understand the jungle here and these guys are experts you know when you're living you know with the wild animals every day like where i live and the, you know someone made fun of me in africa they're like oh you only have one bird on your street and that's it like you know, he called me up on, on online and he's like uh he's like man like he's like he doesn't even want to talk to me because i only have one bird but you know, like let's try, let's try to work together here. You know, I'm I'm from a totally different area, and I'm trying to help out. You know, like North Pole and South Pole, like it's true, Europeans. And, and as you can see, there's 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 not a whole lot of activity here, but there is a lot of lightning and some other things that we're not really looking at um, in terms of maps. So, but what I wanted to stress is we need to look carefully at what's going on. We need to smell what's going on here with this, and even in Lake Bakal, up into Russia. So. Uh, um, and let me just pause again because I have to pray and take a walk. I'm going to take a walk and uh, think about some things. I like to listen to earth and the earth is blowing in here and we're about to have a rainstorm. And we have not had a rain. There's like 60% humidity right now in my apartment. Um, and then I'm looking outside. The clouds are starting to pour in here and I'm just so thankful. I just wanted to thank earth for such an exciting discussion. Every time I've had a discussion uh of importance some very interesting things that have been happening here um not always just but anyway so it's been pretty interesting but uh, i want to take a break here and i hope you can pause and think about this all very carefully i'm going to leave this map open here um and definitely uh i will try to publish uh some things uh, to look at um, carefully, but give me a second. I'm really sorry about that. So yeah, I'm really sorry. I just published a couple of the maps so you can see the details, um, and I'm gonna come back to that and really uh, show more details than even I've showed already there, but I just need to take a break. I do not like being on a computer this long and having a discussion. I absolutely have to get out of here and listen to the earth and walk around because uh, we're going to have uh, maybe a rainstorm or some lightning and certainly anything I have to say versus what the earth has to say is not even relevant. So, uh, but please, uh, if you have some time, think about it. You know, like I said, there are friends that are listening to this right now and they are probably absolutely furious. I have not eaten breakfast, lunch, um, anything yet. Um, so I'm definitely thinking about you trying to help you out and think about what we can do. But the problem is actually very uh, complicated and we need to work together. So we need to try to think about this situation immediately. And I hope this really helps you out um, in terms of thinking about what we need to do. I'll be right back as soon as possible. Um, but I, I'll, thanks. So hello everybody. Um, wow, that's a funny word, hello. Um, so, uh, okay, so I was walking back. I was thinking about so many different ideas and uh, you know, no pen or paper to, write all this down give you all the details but so here's the thing uh, the devil if you know anything about the history of the devil the devil was once like uh, God's you know friend or even sidekick or even almost equal um, and uh, so, so the history of Satanism and 
the cult and all that really goes back to uh, the fact that that uh, God and Satan were essentially hanging out together. Um, and uh, so I, I, you know, one of the interesting things about all this is that we have a uh, North Pole and we have a South Pole. I mean, pretty we're pretty certain about what the axis is. You know, you basically draw a line between the North Pole and the South Pole, and you have an axis uh, there. Uh, give me one second here. Uh, so I'm really sorry uh, about this, but so I want to come up with this idea of this satanic axis. So we all know the truth, all right? We think we know the truth. The North Pole and the South Pole, we think we understand the Earth and the universe. And really, we want to have a discussion here about spirituality uh, and the balance between... Uh, the real numbers and the imaginary numbers and we're going to look at that in a second here so but i wanted to talk about the satanic access or and i didn't even label this right uh i should have said satanic access or wildlife pole so uh essentially on our planet uh hey buddy uh so i, I need to speak louder and more confidently um but this is very important so this idea essentially is this area right here uh, is like almost a no-go zone, right? This is this this is the satanic access between this area and if you study this carefully You'll see that this access Doesn't exist, but it actually maybe should exist But and between this region here on the opposite side of the planet This is the Caribbean. This is one of the most vital areas and this you would almost call uh, the it's not necessarily the safe side but it could be the evil pole there's the good pole and then the evil pole this is probably the evil side of the satanic axis or the wildlife axis so this wildlife axis is the axis for for fish for animals for most of life on earth and clearly we have the north pole and the south pole here we have the magnetic uh, North Pole right in this region right and actually that's extremely important and then on this side we have the magnetic South Pole right and that actually is right sorry about this I'm sorry if I'm spinning around too much for some people here so you can kind of see that this guy right here points to the magnetic South Pole we have an earthquake here this thing here uh, essentially goes right to there so uh, and you can see that so but basically if you follow this here you go up this tree here all around here and you basically get to this guy right here on this and we're looking at so many data points here we're looking at hundreds of thousands of earthquakes and I'm sorry if my computer's a little slow uh, and it looks a little bit weird but you can see essentially what's going on here and this region right here is very important for biodiversity and everything so my grandfather and i'll tell you a scary story uh, a second and i don't want to even have to tell you this but there's a mystery because my grandpa my mom was born in indonesia uh, which is all these islands out in this region uh, my grandfather maybe traveled to island of Sulawesi and got Alzheimer's um, from, it's possible. Uh, so he actually uh, lost his mind uh, from even trying to think logically about some of this stuff uh, on Earth. He was kind of a, a conspiracy theorist in some ways, and some good and some bad. So, uh, and uh, but what I wanted to stress is that the importance of this satanic axis. Um, so uh, let's move that around a little bit. Now this all heads up to, this is called the Ring of Fire, and if you travel this region up to here, it gets to Alaska. And I wanted to open up a map to show you this. So you can see that this is the last earthquakes in the last 30 days. Now you can see if this is the potential uh, area it all heads up into Alaska which actually Alaska is getting the most earthquakes so 
it looks like over long periods of time, uh, decades, that other map shows many more earthquakes in this region and also in here, but actually recently, the earthquakes are actually more up into Alaska, and this is the tallest mountain in North America is right there, incidentally. So uh, that is an important thing to think about. So uh, what I would stress here, I need to pause for a second. So I, I want to re-discuss this with you about things. So again, going back to the history of our discussion, we're going to try to talk about the spirituality here in a moment, right? Uh, how are we really listening to Earth is the question here. And it's not just how we look at Earth and how do we approach essentially uh, the Congo jungle. On And uh, again, I wanted to stress, this is called the East... I'm calling this the east, even though it's west, because actually this may be connected to over here. Uh, fundamentally, we need to think about this. And the west, and the reason I call this the west is if you look at the air current, uh, let me see if I can do this on zoom.earth, you can see uh, what's going to happen here is in the South America, this airflow actually goes through the south here and you can see it's coming down here this is why i'm calling it the west side this wind actually comes up through here so the jungle it actually does not go directly from this jungle to that jungle the wind currents they actually go through here and around here so i'm sorry if this is loading slowly but this is a very important truth and you can see there's another wind current that commonly goes here down to the south magnetic pole which is through here um, now uh, but this is very important discussion because that's why we would call this the west entrance because it actually comes from the Amazon so actually it's a whole way of rethinking about all the microorganisms and sharing biodiversity between the two areas and this would be the east because therefore uh, this is west so but basically we have front door and back door and Obviously, it's probably best to go through the front door first. Uh, you can uh, sail along the coast here, North Africa, and this is part of the uh, uh, thinking of how we think about the brain of the wildlife brain. So again, uh, let me look at this map really quick. You can see that we basically have a North Pole and a South Pole. We have three main areas here that all see, I'm gonna turn off this map because we have so much data here. It's hundreds of thousands. Yeah, so it's really, sorry about this. Uh, so I need to, it's maybe gonna take us some time. It's not even loading. So it's probably best to even keep that. But uh, so let me uh, suggest, let's let's put this on a, I'm, I'm really sorry about this, uh, but I wanna do it in a weird climate map so you can see this a little bit differently. Uh, sorry about the delay on this. So yeah, I, I just really need to think more spiritually about all this whole uh, effort here. You know, we have people and wildlife uh, basically really stressed out. Now you can see on the South Pole, if that was the brain here, we basically have three main things that are very similar here, right? So you basically have a South Pole, a Middle brain and then a north pole thing that also kind of is the same shape here heading up to the actual north pole which is actually quite empty in this whole region there's a kind of a circular area here uh, it's hard to see that um, you can get uh, different types of maps projections uh, to see but essentially this is the south pole here right so uh, what I wanted to stress, again, if we're talking about this satanic access or wildlife access as, as we're discussing, uh, essentially that's all here. And we probably should be very cautious about going into that uh, center there region. Like I said, my grandfather got Alzheimer's from visiting this specific place. Um, and our perception of everything is probably completely incorrect. So, uh, and then here we have Taiwan, and then you have... Sri Lanka and then on this side you also have Fiji right out here so there are some uh, areas and even into Japan and actually the other thing is don't necessarily bias yourself because again a lot of this research may actually belong on the North Pole and the South Pole we have been discussing this let me open up my door one second hold on 
sorry, I'm not getting enough fresh air in my apartment. I try to leave the windows open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, so I can listen to what's going on outside. Uh, even the traffic noise uh, helps me understand what's going on. I live near the one of the busy streets. So, uh, but uh, again, what I'm trying to express here is that this is one side of the pole here, and then on the other side, we have the opposite side of the wildlife pole here and this actually extends down into Colombia and the north part of the Amazon and the reason this is nice is because you have mo not all the animals want to live necessarily naturally in the deep jungle that's why this is complicated it's more important it's important that it's complicated because you have a lot of biodiversity Galapagos Islands right out there as well so man I'm sorry I think my nose is about to bleed here uh, we have kind of a complicated weather system heading in here uh, it's really unbelievable. I, I go back outside as soon as possible. This is very stressful to talk about because I, I understand there's some people that are really struggling right now. Um, so again, I wanted to bring this back to Africa uh, and try to conclude this discussion uh, to really say, you know, if you are living in Africa, you know, this is the wildlife center. Um, we haven't really discussed the Amazon, but uh, certainly there is a lot of people here very close to the jungle and some very important things to be working on so if there is conflict uh we got to be cautious because africa does not want to be in that conflict neither does south no one wants to be in the conflict and uh, america historically staying out of conflict was the smart decision and this may be the era for africans to really uh get involved in global globally what's going on but unfortunately that could mean significant conflict uh and actually making africa a center and if you look at the world map, uh, which we'll try to look at a flat map here, what do you notice here? Well, you have Africa in the center of everything. And in the future, it could entirely be that that would be the case. This is the west, this is the east, and right in the center is Africa and Europe. So, but that's not the whole story. Um, you know, what I was going to suggest is before we start talking about conflict in the jungle, uh, you know, we might reconsider uh what we're doing in terms of where we live and even uh it is really exciting to live in a different country uh my everyone in my family was born outside of the united states uh or has lived significantly outside the u.s at least uh so if this becomes an international lake, uh, we can basically do very low income housing, maybe even provide free food and shelter um, and redo high density housing here in Africa. And it could be one of the coolest places on earth to live uh, because you basically have some interesting wildlife and you let get a very important lesson there. However, uh, as people get older, you know, there's a lot of people thinking about cryogenics and extending their life indefinitely into the future infinitely. And I would be cautious about those kind of projects. Um, but what I would recommend is that we maybe we really need to rethink about the North Pole here entirely. Um, and actually, although we are trying to populate the South Pole, maybe the North Pole may be actually wiser uh, to populate because you have so much beachfront property and there's other things to think about when we think about life on other planets. And I did discuss how we may even link, uh, you know, as we live on Mars and uh, other planets or, or moons, we may want to connect certain parts of the North Pole to that spiritually. So when we think about these three islands here, uh, and this guy over here and these other this other mysterious triangle that we have this is a kind of a triangle shape here and then we have a triangle shape over here as well um, as well as what we've been talking about which is this vast area here called the uh, wildlife pole so but reconsider it don't get all think that you have to live necessarily where there is wildlife because there is no aurora for instance uh, that makes it down to Africa, and it's pretty interesting to live under the uh, northern lights or southern lights. Um, a lot of people go to Iceland for that, for instance. So uh, there is reasons to do things everywhere, and what I would recommend is is actually creating. We need to think about having a whole in times of future here. So we're actually maybe going to call this the Black Pole. Um, we have a White Pole down here. Uh, 
And it's interesting for Africans and others to think about living off Earth. And we probably need to be happy living in on the North Pole and South, or particularly the North Pole, if we're interested in living on another planet first, we may need some experience and practice. So it may be wise to even, if you're thinking of uh, going to Mars, maybe live on the North Pole first. So uh, on the Black Pole. So if this is the Black Pole uh, and the South Pole is the uh, White Pole, um, uh, one thing to think about is the language and how we think about this spiritually. Uh, what I was going to suggest is that the uh, language for the Arabic actually has a line underneath it. We could consider using Arabic on the South Pole. Uh, Hindi actually has a line on top of it, and we may consider using Hindi on the North Pole. So that's a very funny thing to think about because uh, the way that we think about this, I'm talking in English right now. I do not like to talk in English very much at all. This is almost an act of terrorism for me to talk in English so and I'm really sorry the wind is picking up I don't know if you can hear my fan it kind of collects this uh, thing it wants me to really stress the importance of language so I'm really sorry about talking in English here and I would even say yeah so think about this um, I'm gonna try to get offline here immediately and uh, do some other things but again uh, the black pole so it whether you're doing research you know, we need to we need to create. We've been talking about Accra creating a zoo on the moon on our actual moon near planet Earth, and maybe starting that out in Accra uh, and and rethinking about how we can uh, help animals live on other planets. It wouldn't be just humans. Uh, it would be fun to live with uh, wildlife. So that's an interesting proposal um, and uh, something to think about. And West Africa definitely can play a huge role. This all, like I said, this all used to be jungle and wildlife. They kicked the animals out. So we need to really think about that carefully. Um, so it turns out that all of this near that we were talking about, the other side of that is basically the discussion on the Amazon. And I am not really willing to talk about that yet because, uh, you know, we really want to keep that uh, as sacred and spiritual land. We need The wind is really picking up right now. I don't know if you can hear that. It's like blowing through the window right now. So yeah, what I would say is let's pray about this um, and really think about the jungle, particularly the Amazon. That's gonna be hugely important. Now, what, I, what I wanted to stress in this discussion, which I did not discuss uh, in great detail, but uh, you know, basically the indigenous cultural erosion and thinking about the jungle and people that have not used a computer and details like that so uh, essentially what i would suggest strongly recommend is that uh you know we basically had people on earth that have never used a computer uh you know not they don't use cell phones they use spiritual cell phones they're thinking about really important stuff and that balance between uh the real and the imaginary is very important here and i need to get offline and start thinking about some other stuff so Again, you can see this very sharp point of India here uh, relative to Africa. That's something I've been thinking about quite a bit. Um, you can look into some details called electromagnetic field reincarnation. We do have a question about how humans might reincarnate or even do space transport into deep space. And that is a question that is different uh, that we can look at uh, at some point. But essentially, India is a huge factor. It almost looks like an airplane. Uh, here, so uh, an aerospace may become a huge uh, thing for India in particular and the uh, future there. Now, in terms of Africa, that's a whole separate issue um, here. So, uh, but I'm sorry to talk about some of these issues and really, um, yeah, and I, I just wanted to close uh, at least on this point. So, we're basically talking about this wildlife pole here and. Um, you know, contributing and being cautious about everything. So uh, what I really wanted to stress is just, uh, yeah. So I absolutely have to get out, out of here. I absolutely have to get offline. I'm gonna try to take one more uh, stroll here. I need to just cancel this whole entire discussion immediately because hopefully you're not, hopefully you're gonna do your own research in your own town and look out the window and see 
something way more important about right where we all live. And again, I wanted to stress that is that, um, you know, on a sphere, every single point is very important and uh, we need to be cautious and really, you know, like if we try to go other places, we actually bail out on our roots. And I was having a conversation with someone that visited uh, from DC, Washington, DC the other day. And I mentioned, well, you know, if you, if you pick up a tree and you uh, move it every year, the roots will not really stay. You need to have roots to survive. Um, and that's important for us to always remember where our past is and uh, as well as our future. And we, as we travel and we think, we need to re remember uh, how it all started uh, and where we maybe need to just stay to be cautious about things. So, uh, yeah. Um, so with that, I'm going to try to close this up. And I would just say um, definitely uh, try to take a look at some details. Um, and, uh, yeah, it looks like the storm is coming in here. I got hit a little bit in the eye with a raindrop as I walked past uh, the bank um, in town. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of things to think about. So uh, and I'm really sorry uh, if this hasn't been, uh, you know, I, I, I hopefully this will be really interesting. Try to follow some good spiritual advice. And we really have not talked very much about the spiritual side of things here. And I'm really sorry about that. Um, and that's maybe where you come into play here and hopefully you can come up with some really important ideas about how things really work. Thank you so much. Um, and I really hope uh, that we can work together universally on this. Um, and uh, see you later. Ciao. Hello, everybody. So, yeah, there's still some things, you know, I, as I, um, you know, we want to try to make sure that uh, you personally and everyone understands what's going on. So uh, it, to take us back into history here, you know, we have people that are really struggling on earth, definitely. Uh, and then we have wildlife. Um, so uh, if you remember coronavirus, which I call the COVID virus, started in uh, China along the Yangtze River. Um, and I wanted to think about that carefully because actually the virus started in a food market um, and the latest uh, war in ukraine is actually in the wheat it's the capital perhaps canada and uh russia are the biggest producers of wheat in the world um and that's really a, a war over food and so coronavirus which really shut down the earth no one could travel any all the airplanes you know billions of people could not do anything uh for like a year um and that was really significant so what i wanted to stress is that as i looked in that situation the river system is very important and we're looking at a river map here um let me so i i've done a previous study looking at the river system this is the area and then they have discharge you can also do that and you can see the amazon is number one and by quite a bit but the congo is basically number two um and but basically uh what i wanted to stress is that what, what has happened historically is that originally the the animals probably wanted to be right on the, the lake right and they've been pushed further and further away from the lake and all the way up to the river almost to non-existence so that's what happens and the interesting thing about the congo you look at this part of the congo this is essentially part where the people are so it's actually a reverse it's a middle process where the animals are probably uh not in the center but in the middle not a, 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 of the river system so uh but these rivers kind of give us a guide of what's going on so uh, i wanted to look at that carefully um, I still have not eaten any breakfast or lunch yet, um, and I need to get some food. I don't like to do things angrily when I'm very starving. I just try to eat, but uh, I needed to uh, diet a little. So anyway, so but what I wanted to stress here is that this 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 pathways. That's why the pathways are kind of weird here because the animals may actually follow a different river system and have to cross through different areas. Uh, so that's why these areas are that way. So if you look here on this map, you can see down here on this actually becomes part of the nose of 
one of these nodes is and there's actually subtle details on those other lakes and the wildlife this is actually the only area that the wildlife really has where there's not very many people and even that is not completely true so you can see that this pathway through here is very critical and there's actually some smaller lakes even in here that would be extremely important um, but uh, so basically that's this so it it uh, you know I, I'm trying to listen to some advice here uh, from the earth and it and uh, and just uh, you know the water situation is very vital you know we're about to have a rainstorm here and uh, clean water what, what I really wanted to express here is the importance of headaches um, I actually live with a constant headache uh, most days so I, I have a really I, I really understand people that live their life in pain um, now uh, what I wanted to stress is that headaches really usually start with uh, poor water quality um, and actually most of the water actually comes from below ground on earth nowadays like originally they they got water directly from a lake but then that lakes got to be too polluted so they started to get in groundwater and even in some areas the groundwater becomes too polluted um, but what I wanted to emphasize here is the importance of clean water. So when we're trying to tackle this problem of health and just food, we need to make sure the animals have clean water. Um, and actually what happens here is that if the water is basically polluted in the lake uh, because of the rain runoff, and in America, you know, you definitely cannot drink from the Mississippi River, um, it is very polluted. So, uh, but these smaller rivers, sometimes you have clean water up into the, and this happens in the Himalayas as well. So let me zoom out. It's gonna reload this map, but you can start to see the other river systems. Uh, but, uh, so what I wanted to emphasize here uh, is the importance of the clean water. So we're talking about the neuroscience of the planet right and we basically have this concept of the ears of the planet and then even a concept of how the brain may work uh in terms of a life brain so we basically have uh you know the uh, north pole and south pole right this looks like a brain but where would be a brain the concept of a brain for life on earth in terms of not just the astrophysics in terms of the uh you know the aurora and all that would be here but how does it work uh, as we discussed uh, the galaxy is kind of an a flat disc and actually most of the life may be along the equator of not only our planet but all the planets in our galaxy may also have primarily a uh, possible possibility for life on the equator so the equator is actually very important and as you get towards the north pole and the south pole that's where you get uh some of these other kind of ideas so uh anyway i'm really sorry to try to explain this in such great detail i wanted to look at the situation specifically to see what we could do to help the wildlife and help some specific friends that are struggling here in east africa so uh, let's go back to this image really quickly just so we can see where the people are. So as you can see, this whole area is populated uh, quite heavily. Um, and that means that it's both farmland and people here. So we basically need to rethink. You can see that there's, uh, you know, and, and actually what I wanted to emphasize is that it is a solvable problem in terms of population density, but we need to like start thinking more about how Kampala works. So Nairobi is really more of a desert city and a lot of people are moving out into here because they need farm, land, and food. So they basically leave this part of Nairobi and come over here to like Kisi or this other city here in Western Kenya. Um, and then even further, they go out into uh, Rwanda and uh, Uganda and Burundi. So, uh, and you can see there's actually way even more people out there. So with some pretty large cities. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and as we look at this map, uh, I wanted to look at the soil map. So you can see here that the soil is pretty consistently awesome here. And actually this is such awesome soil. If I were to zoom out and look at uh, 
America, this is uh, actually uh, the top end soil. So we have uh, some of that soil down in America here. There's this pink soil, which is pretty good soil, but this is even a higher classification of soil where they can farm twice a year or even three times a year. Three. So like in the Midwest, in this soil, we get basically one season a year, but you can get even two seasons. So and that's a big, comes a problem because even in the Midwest, the the soil is turning into sand because they're planting so much stuff and they're not uh, even letting the plants uh, deteriorate and rejuvenate the soil. So, uh, but basically you can see the soil there in Africa is actually quite good. And the diversity also happens because the soil, you get these diverse soil regions, so you can have a variety of life living there. So that's important to see that here in West Africa, you can see uh, that there is some of this floodplain here and that's very vital for swamps. So you have uh, a lot of mangrove forests and that's a big hot topic. Um, mangroves, they're very beautiful trees and you should definitely know about those. So, but basically these are the mangroves areas. So what I was talking with a friend of mine in West Africa is they were trying to plant trees uh, and as a discussion, you know, I, I visited, you know, uh, my dad works on uh, environmental research and he tries to, to uh, do uh, a project in Cape Cod where they put uh, clams, millions of clams in the water uh, to try to clean the water uh, from the pollutants because what happens is people uh, use the bathroom and then that, that waste drains right the nitrogen from, uh, you know, poop and uh, pee basically gets into the uh, river system. Uh, it's got to you go to the bathroom maybe uh, once a day, a couple times a day, and that's got to drain somewhere. So that actually creates a lot of nitrogen in the water and pollutes. And the, uh, we actually lost all of our seaweed in the last uh, ten, five to ten years. It is completely gone in Cape Cod. Now that's a good thing and a bad thing. So, but the the forest, the mangroves are very important because they're unbelievably beautiful trees we see some of them there's only a couple of them left like one when we, when we say a couple maybe just one or two in downtown miami that are left they last maybe a hundred years or more but having only a few trees versus a whole forest is a whole different story so the floodplains are very important um anyway so back to uh east so essentially this front door of africa may start right here in dakar and you can come around through here um, but again what i was talking about is the cleanliness of the water you can kind of see the congo jungle uh the congo river here and it's uh parts uh and uh i wanted to stress that the clean water again if you have even a speck of dirt in your water you can taste it and you can actually get very sick so it's very important to have really clean water for the animals as well. So on the national park side, when we're looking at how to define these national parks, we definitely need to look at the uh, rivers. And that's why right in here, we're looking at this whole national park right here in Kenya and Uganda, and actually using some of this lake to grow uh, food here. So basically keeping this lake maybe more towards farming and even have a lot of insects uh, in the air it can be a very big hazard as well. It can be very annoying. On Cape Cod, they have uh, horse flies and they bite you uh, viciously. So they're very uh, vicious kind of flies. And it can be far worse in the jungle. So, uh, but again, you see these areas here in between that we are discussing and trying to keep these pathways, especially along the rivers, uh, clean from farming. And the trade-off is that you know, you need a river that, you know, 90% or more of some of these farms are irrigated and they require a river or a uh, electric engine to pump the water out um, into the thing. So it may be nice to not farm directly up next to the river and even rethink about the rules in terms of having wildlife, essentially just walk through your farm and even trample your crops maybe a hundred percent legitimate or even eat your crops entirely in these regions because these if you're gonna farm in this region you basically need to support the wildlife so uh and uh, uh that's an important truth here so these pathways are interesting to look at um again here is this so uh here's kind of the uh 
side. So again, when uh, so I, I wanted to think about how the Earth thinks here for a moment, right? So we basically have this eye here, these nose here, and then also up here. Now you have this very interesting thing because if you looked at Earth at night image, you'll basically see that Egypt is a glowing light here. So you have this weird thing where at the top of this brain is like this glowing light, and the entire Nile River is glowing with light. And you have this weird like antenna uh, that basically extends all the way into the jungle. A very interesting area of astrophysics research uh, thinking about Egypt um, and some details here especially also in North Africa along here so there's almost like a halo of light uh, at nighttime on North Africa so you can imagine you have this eye and like a halo here uh, in North Africa um, and then uh, you know Africa for the most part is very dark at night um, it's one of the only continents that's almost completely dark at night um, and that's very funny uh, that basically that Africans do not use electricity uh, nearly as much. Uh, same thing goes in South America as well. So, uh, but it's important to think about that. So, so I'm really sorry. I'm trying to desperately think about everything that I should have talked about, and I really should have closed this conversation. But I just wanted to emphasize uh, the importance of looking at this question. So, uh, I'm gonna uh, pause this again. So on this map, you can see a precipitation map, and this is what I was talking about earlier. You kind of see this hidden eye of precipitation here, and as well as along the coast here, this is other precipitation. So there's basically that point that you don't actually see. It's an invisible area, uh, almost a lake there in Africa. So here is the uh, farmland map. You can see uh, it kind of heats up right here in this region and also uh, Uganda. Um, and if I were to go up here into Ethiopia, there's a lot of farmland as well in Ethiopia. But basically, you can see that it's kind of already picking into this land area here and even the southern part. So I'm going to try to close out this conversation as soon as possible. Um, I wanted to re-look at how this, uh, the importance of this whole area. You can see this whole chain kind of comes down into Africa here again. Um, so... Uh, Again, we're looking at perhaps one of the most important areas on the planet. So um, it's really important what happens here in terms of farming and also the national parks. So these three pockets here are very important uh, looking at what's happening here. So, uh, and then, uh, okay, so I'm gonna try to close up this conversation. I'm really sorry for the length of this discussion. Um, Wow, it's been almost an hour, um, so uh, more than an hour. So uh, basically, yeah, take a look at the details and see what we can do to help out. There's gonna be some people that may comment on this that need help desperately, and we need to try to help uh, the people out. Um, so let's see what we can do um, and also try to think about this. So, and then, uh, you know, the farmland situation does become, you know, you can get, uh, uh, food after a year uh, by growing stuff, but it takes quite a lot of uh, details and knowledge to know. So anyway, uh, I will try to get back into some more details later about this whole discussion. Um, I'm going to try to publish this as soon as possible, and I hope it has helped you out. So I just wanted to say thanks again uh, so much for trying to take this discussion seriously. Um, please try to think about everything here. I'm kind of dying out because I've been talking for so long here. Um, but it's really been, uh, uh, it has been a little bit difficult for me to talk about this. And certainly we need help. We need your help uh, looking at this um, and how to really understand what's been going on. Thank you so much. I'm really sorry for the length of this discussion. But it's really important for us to look at this. And there's definitely people that need help. And there's definitely a whole wildlife that we really have to think about. Uh, in terms of what's going on. Thank you so much. So again, uh, this topic was uh, primarily on uh, wildlife, the jungle, uh, and human Satanism, or the Satanic access, and essentially how to listen to Earth. So 
all those topics are very complicated uh, and I hope that we have really gone into some details to get started here um, but there's a lot more work to be done um, and a lot of actual things that we need to do uh, to make earth um, and help out everyone here including the wildlife thank you so much I'll see you later bye and I'll definitely be praying for you and all the wildlife and all the animals um, I try to go and walk around and talk to some of the animals um, and I'd send them messages and tell them to fly all over the earth and solve some problems um, and uh, you know I saw a funny little uh, white dog as I walked past here that was pretty funny um, and uh, you know just I always try to uh, think about the best way that I can possibly help out everyone so uh, and I really wanted to emphasize the importance of working together uh, to solve these kind of really complicated problems involves listening to the wildlife on earth um, and uh, kind of, uh, yeah, so definitely listening to the earth and to all the, even the tiniest animal. Um, and uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm vegetarian. Uh, I definitely encourage being a vegetarian. Um, you know, a lot of these uh, problems uh, should maybe go back to that uh, question as well. Um, so anyway, so yeah, thanks again. Uh, I'll definitely try to uh, pray for you. Uh, and uh, I hope you're getting some uh, time to go offline and do some other things and uh, walk around and open up your windows, listen to earth, um, and hopefully we'll get a rainstorm or a lightning storm here in a little bit. Um, and uh, you know, um, like I said, I live in a pretty difficult climate area. It's pretty dry where I live. Um, there's not a whole lot of wildlife and a lot of things, and yet I'm still trying to help out and see what I can do um, and learn about what's going on. And like I said, just take it easy and try to learn about some things and help out as much as you can. Thank you so much. There is a number of projects going on and you definitely should try to look into them. I have just pretty much written up some documents and some things about uh, things, uh, but there's definitely a whole lot of work on the wildlife side. So I think I've done uh, some documents on how to do some farming, but we really need to think about how to share that land uh, with the wildlife. So that's a very important topic that we definitely need to get into um, to prevent uh, even wars on earth and very serious problems and so one hint I would tell you is that uh, you know anyway I'm gonna get going winds starting to pick up here I can hear it blowing in see you later ciao